Hey, get the book at thugnosebook.com. What it do, what it do? This week on Thug Notes, we hitting that true blue sea with Life of Pi by Yan Martell. The book start with a shady first section called Author's Note, where a nameless narrator flexing like he the author of this book. Brother just chilling, sipping on coffee, when he started chopping it up with a hood named Francis. Now this geezer all like, say dog, I bet I can tell you a story that's so tight, it's gonna make you believe in God. Oh sh- I gotta hear this, man. Francis started yapping about a boy named Pa he knew back in the day. Pa's story is so damn trill, the narrator gotta hit up Pa himself to get the legit story. It go a little something like this. As a little boy, Pa was coming up in Pondicherry, India, where his parents running a zoo that gave him enough cash flow to live a pretty cush lifestyle. Oh, and real quick, Pa ain't this little thug's full name. It's Piscina Molitor Patel. But since everyone always on his nuts calling him names like pissing, he decided Pa gonna be his new street name. Now, Pa was actually raised a Hindu, and he is all about that jam. Still, it don't stop his 14-year-old self from sniffing around Christianity and Islam. Eventually, he decides he gonna rep all three religions, even though his parents and the local holy rollers ain't feeling it. But Pa ain't tripping, cause to him, all religions are true, and he just want to show love to the man upstairs. And it's a good thing Pa's so open-minded, cause his little ass about to move across the world. Since Pa's mom and pop ain't down with some political sh** happening in New India, they decide to sell the zoo and peace out to Canada. So Pa, his fam, and all their animal homies hop up on a big ass ship and start cruising. But after a couple days, a storm rages through the water and the ship starts sinking. Pa dog is the only member of his family to survive. Damn, dude hops on a lifeboat, but brother got a share with an orangutan named OJ. A zebra with a jacked up leg and a spotted hyena who started acting like a real dick when he decided to eat the other two animals. So not chill, spotted hyena. So not chill, man. But sh get even less chill when a 450 pound tiger named Richard Parker pop up from under a tarp and murk that hater. Pa like, man, f this. So he ghetto rig himself a raft to keep his distance from Richie P's crazy self. Pa finally recognized that the raft ain't gonna be enough to save his ass. The only way he gonna survive this mess is by putting that tiger in check with some training. Pa straight alpha males that bitch. With the help of survival guides, some rations, and other supplies, Pa able to survive in the Pacific Ocean for a long ass time. That don't mean it's easy though. At one point, Pa gets so dehydrated that he goes blind and his mind starts slipping. Matter of fact, he going so damn crazy that he start conversating with Richard Parker about their favorite kind of munchies. Turns out, Pa wasn't talking to Richard at all. Instead, it was another blind castaway. This French fool who float up in Pa like, my man, hop up on this here life raft and get yourself some rest, dog. But when the dude try to boot up and murk Pa, Richard Parker like, bitch, uh-uh, and rips that sucker up. He dead. Later, Pa's boat lands on an island that survives by eating brothers. Yeah, you heard that right. Pa just about loses his when he finds teeth inside a piece of fruit. Ugh! So Pa and Richard Parker chunk deuces out of that trap. After over 200 days on a struggle in that watery abyss, their lifeboat washes up on the shore of Mexico. And Richard Parker rolls out into the jungle without even saying bye or nothing. What a dick, man. Pa gets picked up, taken to a hospital, and later questioned by two dudes from the Japanese Ministry of Transport. Pa tell him what went down, but these dudes like, Psh, this boy must have lost his damn mind. So Pa like, all right, all right, that too crazy for you? You want something real? Check this out. And he tell the story again, this time laying it down raw. He say he wasn't on the boat with no animals. Instead, it was the ship's cook, a sailor with a broken leg, and Pa's own mama. Just like the hyena, the cook iced both the sailor and Pa's mama. But since Pa don't play, he shanked that boy in the stomach and then feasted on his corpse. Damn, Pa, you gangster dog. But since neither story can be really proven, Pa just like, forget truth. Let me ask you, which story you like better? They like, uh, we'll go with the animals one. 
Passe, yeah? Well, just so you know, believing in God is the same exact jam. Now, the title of this book ain't just talking about the life of some dude named Pa. There's more to it, player. Just look at what Pa say about his name. And that Greek letter that looks like a shack with a corrugated tin roof, and that elusive, irrational number with which scientists try to understand the universe, I found refuge. Pa sees his name as a symbol for home, that practical safety from the outside world. But at the same time, the number Pi is irrational. Can't nobody make total sense of it, because it never terminates or has fixed boundaries. And that's exactly what the book's saying about all life. It's a mix between the rational, things we can make sense of through science and reason, and the irrational, things that ain't even the smartest hood on the block can figure out. Life of Pi, get it? Now don't get me wrong, science, reason, logic, dank. But that don't mean everything in life gotta be rational. The world gotta have a little taste of madness too. All living things contain a measure of madness that moves them in strange, sometimes inexplicable ways. This madness can be saving, it is part and parcel of the ability to adapt. Without it, no species would survive. When the shit is the fan, it's religion, the non-rational element that gives Pi the juice to survive and make sense of the world around him. Yes, so long as God is with me, I will not die. Amen. Pi might have that religion game on lock, but it don't mean that he got all the answers. Ain't no doubt that P-Dog gets shit on in the novel and has trouble coming to terms with all his suffering. So on one hand, Pi realized that the mess he go through up on that raft don't mean a damn thing to the universe. But on the other hand, to him, there ain't nothing more important. Cause it's all he knows. In a cold, dark universe, not only is your suffering relative, but truth is too. All throughout this book, we get muddied representations of what's real. I mean, who is this fool calling himself the author at the beginning? And at the end, Pi pretty much tell us that the whole story about him and Richard Parker could all be bunk. Hell, there's a good reason to believe that Richard Parker is just the savage killer be killed side of Pi. Peep the subtle ways that little thug and Richie P associated with each other. Since we are on the subject, I became as constipated as Richard Parker. I began to imitate Richard Parker and sleep in an incredible number of hours. But who the hell knows? I guess the realest truth is there ain't no way to tell what really went down in that raft. Hell, both of the stories pile on us might be total bullshit. So like Pa say, does it really matter what's actually true? Should we just go with what's better for us? Sure, rationality and practicality are worth fighting for, but maybe it ain't always so important to know the real deal. Maybe the best thing is just going with what's going to help you cope and give you hope. Know what I mean? Hey, thanks for watching, my well-read ballers. Peace. Yo, thanks for watching, guys. Don't go anywhere, because if you like pie, and I mean the P-I-E kind, I want to tell you about a good friend of mine, Dame Drops and his super official food reviews. He's a straight up foodie and always is sure to share some laughs. You gotta check out his latest. I mean, he's reviewing all sorts of stuff. Crunch wrap sliders, zesty citrus wings, bacon on a stick, and so, so much more. Click right here or the link in the description to be taken to his channel. Make sure to tell him Wisecrack sent you and be sure to subscribe while you're there. And ask him when he's coming for some Korean barbecue and to kick it with the Wisecrack crew. And one more thing, everyone. We've got our original design Thugnose tanks and women's tees on clearance. Now more than 30% off. So head over to the Thugnote store and get them now. Because once they're gone, they're gone. The link to the store is right here and you'll find it below in the description too. Alright, that's it for now. Peace, guys.